on uh, angels and demons and uh, firmament and pissed off. Okay, so basically, okay, if you, if I think, I think if you're the bottom line on demons is this: demons are just pissed off angels. I'm pretty sure that's what I'm pretty sure that's that's one way to put it. It might not be. Well, obviously it's not, but it's not going to be the totality of an explanation, but it's a pretty accurate, simple way to put things. There's been a lot of time, there's been a lot of time that has passed by between the time that the angels were uh, warred against God, went to war against God, and, um, and they were condemned to earth, uh, and then not only earth, but also the ground beneath the earth. So, because the book of Enoch, I, I'm not an expert on the book of Enoch, I'm just reading it for the first time. Um, but there's something about some stupid angel that did something stupid and uh, God condemned him to a pit in the ground. So, um, something like that. Something like that. So, I mean, there's so many interesting things here. Uh, if in fact the angels were condemned to the the, the 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 space of the earth that's beneath the ground, if that is true, which I think there is some scriptural precedent for that, maybe not the Bible, but uh, what they call what some people call uh, biblically validated extra biblical text. So, like the Book of Enoch would be one of those. Um, I mean, technically, there are. It's not the Book of Enoch. It's the books of Enoch because there's three versions of the Book of Enoch. There's like a Hebrew version, an African version, and another version. I don't know what it is. So it's everything is nuanced and caveat and I mean rich and it's like biology or engineering or computer science. It's like the more you look into it, the more there is to look into, you know. So that's that, that's that's pretty much to me. That's how you know you're looking at something true, because a lie, if you dig long enough, deep, you can eventually reach the bottom of it, and you just can plainly see. Ah, there's nothing here. I mean, it's like literally nothing. A, a, the story of a lie is like. The fog that covers a hole, you know, you, you, or the, yeah, the fog, the steam, the whatever, the, the, the cloud, um, the smoke, you know, it's like you just, you, you wave your hand, you blow the smoke away and you see, oh, there's nothing there. It's just a hole in the ground. <laughs> That's what a lie is. Uh, in dealing, in certain situations in my life, dealing with my family and the things they were saying about our father, it's like, I just... I just kept getting the image of an abyss in my mind. It's like you're just saying things that there's nothing to them. They're just empty words. It's just like an abyss. You know, I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example. Like uh, my sister kept saying, people with Alzheimer's need consistency. Okay, so I'm like, I'm just sitting there like, uh, yeah, it's like number one. It's like der, derp, derp. It's like everybody knows that. For God's sake. I mean, so you can see it's like the abyss. It's like there wasn't even any of smoke to wipe, you know, to to wave away in this case. It's just like it was just like they're just putting the abyss right in front of you and trying to tell you it's like a a shiny diamond of brilliant intellectual enhancement. You know, it's like no, it's like this is an abyss. This is a dark hole. A smelly dark hole in the ground. It's like there's nothing. And you're trying to tell me it's like a, a brilliant diamond of intellectual enhancement. It's like what the, it's like what the hell, man? Just out of the gate, it makes no sense. I mean, because everybody knows that. First of all, but second of all, it's like everybody needs consistency. It's like, duh. Everybody know. Everybody knows that life on the road is hard. Specifically because you don't have any consistency. You wake up in a different place every day. I mean, everybody needs consistency. It's like, it's just these stupid, inane, the word is inane, these stupid, inane 
phrases and cliches and broken down, rickety, rackety, clangy old, worthless conglomerations of, of, of thoughtless words, you know? People with Alzheimer's need consistency. It's like, hey, dumbass, everybody needs consistency. Okay, so if everybody needs consistency, then when you're in a weakened state of mind, right, and body, then you probably could benefit from consistency more than a person who isn't in a weakened state of mind and body. So, yeah, derp, derp. You know, sorry, I get emotional about this, but it's like, I mean, this abyss, this particular abyss just goes on and on and on and on and on and I'll spare you the rest of it. But I could go on for a half an hour about how this whole everybody needs consistency or uh, people with Alzheimer's need consistency is, is an abyss. I mean, he did first of all, that, all of that. I mean, as if that's not illustrative of the fact that it's an abyss in and of itself, and I'm really digressing here, I apologize, but it, it is, as if that's not illustrative enough, right? Secondly, he didn't even have Alzheimer's. I mean, it's like, it's like, it's an abyss of insanity. I mean, it's just like, there's nothing, I mean, this is, this is, to be honest with you, I think this phrase, people with Alzheimer's need consistency, I think that's what got me off in this, on this whole abyss thing, because I couldn't help but be confronted with the idea that I was, I was staring into an abyss because but due to what I was being told, it's like, they're telling me these things. It's like, this is an abyss. There's nothing there. It's like, these are just like, this is the most worthless conglomeration of thoughtless words I've ever heard in my entire life. This is unbelievable, you know? So then, um, so then, Okay, so what, so, this is, this is really unbelievable. I mean, this is unbelievable. So what do they do? While they're saying this, I'm talking about my sisters. While they're saying this, while they're vomiting up this worthless conglomeration of thoughtless words, while they're vomiting this stuff up, like some kind of a demon, really. I mean, really, honestly. They are, at the exact same time, kicking my father out of his house getting rid of his dog, getting rid of his car, moving him to a place he's never been before, and surrounding him with people he's never met before. And then they start justifying that with like, oh, it's a team of medical professionals. It's like a team of medical, these are CNAs. You know, when you say, see, I mean, do you understand what I mean about an abyss now? I mean, this thing just goes, I couldn't help but digress on this, I'm sorry. Yeah, this, this con this example of an abyss, a uh, how would you describe it? Ideological, rhetorical abyss, just goes on and on and on and on. This this whole idea, a team of medical, it's like what? Have you lost your minds? This is like insanity. These are CNAs. This is not. You make it when you say medical professionals, you make it sound like some Swedish spa that's overlooking a snow-capped you know, a valley, or, you know, a valley that's covered in, in snow-capped, uh, or a valley that's surrounded by snow-capped peaks, you know? And there's a bunch of uh, soft, sh sold, soft, sold, a bunch of uh, beautiful Swedish nurses <laughs> and doctors running around in soft, sold shoes, you know, and then, and they're giving our father like 24 hour dedicated uh, medical care. No, it's like these people's barely speak English. <laughs> medical professionals, my ass. Yeah, they are medical professionals, but see how, see how the, the rhetoric works? It's, it's like, it's like tricky. It's like slimy. It's like, it sounds like something with, and it, technically it's true, but it has nothing to do with what it sounds like, right? I mean, it's it's slimy rhetoric. It's like it's like in a, a smelly, smoky abyss that stinks, and it's full of slimy things. I mean, it's just unbelievable, right? So, how did I get off on all that? I didn't mean to. That's for sure. But that's that's uh, that's the best example of an abyss 
that I can cut that I've ever experienced. And when I experienced it, it was just like, it was like a abyss, abyss. <laughs> like a, the word abyss, just like in flashing lights. It's like there's nothing there. There's nothing here. It's just a bunch of smoke. I mean, it's just nothing. Just emptiness, you know? And deception and lies and filth. I mean, it's just unbelievable. But uh, anyway, that was my that was my huge I mean, it's appropriate that that digression would be interwoven with a conversation about demons. I mean, seriously, it's like that's unbelievable. So, uh, so the angels are are the demons are pissed off angels. But some time has passed, so things have uh, have developed. You know, they were It's not quite as simplistic as the pissed off angels, but. I guess the more accurate way to say that would be that's the way they started out, you know. So, all right. So what kind of Jesus? Okay, so one of the things, if you read the book of Enoch, one of the things that the pissed off angels taught the people to do, okay, was uh, to do stuff like induce abortions. There's some, there's some things that are hard to understand, like, uh, using plants for like the roots of plants for medicine and stuff um, the, and uh, painting they taught women how to paint their faces they taught men how to uh, take the elements of the earth and fashion them into weapons of war so uh, there's also some reference to genetic splicing uh, Basically, the pissed off angels. Now, now check this out. This is this is really interesting. And this is uh, from the Book of Enoch, but it's corroborated in the Bible. The, in the, I mean, vaguely, not uh, explicitly. Vaguely and briefly, it's in uh, Genesis. I think it might be Genesis chapter six. I'm not sure. Somewhere back back in there. And uh, basically, in Genesis chapter six, it's uh, it's pretty graphic. It it says the sons of God. Now, ch okay. Just that phrase, sons of God, in and of itself. I can't really get I, I can't really get off on that too much because it would take forever. But just that phrase is amazing. Okay. I guess I can get off into it pretty quick. A bit, bit, no, I don't know. I can't decide. Basically, okay. Basically the idea, the big idea, okay, um, is that yes, the earth is flat. But that's like that's like the first step. In a on, on a path, okay, that is of infinite length, basically, or say a thousand miles long, or a hundred thousand miles long, whatever. Infinite is probably more accurate. To say the Earth is like the first step, okay. So you can see there with that metaphor of a path that if you don't take that path, and that in, instead you take the first step down a different path, you're going to end up in two different, two completely different places. Right? Because these are divergent paths. These are not paths that intersect later on. Um, so to say the earth is flat is like that first step, right? So the idea is basically very simply, hopefully I can make this very simple, is that we're made in God's image. Okay? In Genesis chapter 1, a lot of people know, many, many Christians know, not all, but many do, that the Bible says that God made man in his image, his as in our. The word it uses is our, okay? And uh, the Hebrew word for God is, I believe, I don't speak Hebrew, so, you know, correct me if this is not right, but the Hebrew word for God in the Old Testament is Elohim, or however they say that in Hebrew. I, I'm going to go with Elohim, with a little, my little flair, because I, I like flares. But, uh, so, our the traditional cookie cutter canned tuna canned tuna is cookie cutter mass produced you know pallet warehouses full of pallets full of canned tuna so the canned tuna uh, interpretation of that is uh, that it's a reference to the Trinity okay that's fine I don't really have a problem with that I can't really see fault with that but I think that it may 
means either something else in an exclusive way or something else in an inclusive way, meaning it could mean two things. It could mean more than one thing. It could mean two or more things. The other thing that it could mean is that when it says our image, what God is talking about is in our, as in our race, okay? There is a master race of... Um, the, the proposal being made here is that there is a master race of beings wh whose titular head is a being we call God okay what his title is in heaven I don't know but he is comparable to one of our presidents or kings so it's interesting that the Bible refers to God as the king of kings so he's like a super king, a supra king, right? And so if that is true, then it, it gives a little bit more meaning, a little bit more meat to the fact that we are created in God's image. Because when we think about the fact that we're created in God's image, so then we think about, well, okay, well, he's, you know, he looks like us. He's got a head, he's got arms, he's got feet, you know, blah, blah, blah. That's Jesus, yada, yada. okay, bada boom, bada bing, got that all figured out. Next subject, that's kind of the way we do it. But in fact, it might mean a lot more than that, okay? It might mean that the structure of heaven with respect to the beings that live there is comparable to... Okay, so in other words, God is like the political leader of heaven. Now you say that's a little crazy. That sounds a little sacrilegious maybe. You might say that. You might not because you might not care enough to say that. But I think it's interesting because, think about this. Okay, what do we know about heaven? Well, we know it's beautiful, we know it's wonderful, yada, yada, yada. Okay, but we also know, okay, now get ready. We also know that it is imperfect. Imperfect. You want to challenge me on that? Feel free. But, for a fact, without the extra, without the biblically validated extra biblical text, with the Bible itself, it is verified that there was a war in heaven, okay? And it was no small affair. It was a third of the angels. That's, I don't know how many angels there are, but in traditional Christian doctrine, one idea that is proposed is that when you go outside at night and you look at the stars, okay? You're not looking at burning balls of gas a trillion miles away. You are looking at luminaries. You're looking at entities. You're looking at living creatures. Now, anything is possible. Truth is stranger than fiction. I have no idea. I'm not saying that's wrong. However, I tend to believe something that is consistent with that, but a little bit different. I tend to believe that if any of this stuff is true, that it is instead not it's not that the lights themselves are living beings it's that the lights are the lights of the residences the civilizations of heaven so that yes are they living yes they're living because they are indicative of life you know but are the lights themselves living beings I tend to think again if all of this is true and I don't know that it is I tend to I tend to fall down I tend to come down on this side of things uh, then it is indicative of life you know like if you saw a light of somebody's house uh, from you know 2,000 yards away at night or whatever and somebody say what is that you say oh that's the Jones house or somebody says well, what is that oh that's that's uh, Billy Bob Jones what do you mean that's Billy Bob Jones excuse me what do you mean that's Billy Bob Jones that's the light of Billy Bob Jones' house. That's Billy Bob Jones, right? So it's kind of like a semantical thing. When, when you know, if you just if you just make the distinction, are they actual luminary? Are they actual? Uh, is luminary the right word? Is it, I think it might be another word. Luminary, uh, some something, something like that. I think it might be luminary. Um, you know, so it's it's like a semantical thing, you know. <clears throat> and purportedly, the firmament is like a crystalline dome. So it is, uh, uh, it's either opaque or it is translucent, one or the other. It is, uh, 
said to have a texture. There are people who claim to have pictures. Oh, well, not a lot of people, obviously, but a few. Uh, there is one guy I saw last night that, that claims to have pointed his camera straight up and on a clear night and um, set it on time-lapsed and walked away for eight hours or something like that. And when he came back, he was going through it anyway. So I'll see if I can put a link to that video. It's, it's pretty, actually, it's pretty interesting, to be honest with you. But, uh, so, so, so that's all that. So, okay, so here's the deal. Getting back to the original topic. What kind of Jesus are you? And while I was, I was sitting all these shots, I was thinking of different kinds of Jesus. Like, I was thinking about the homeless Jesus, homeless Jesus. I was thinking about the Jesus that didn't have any money. But I was also thinking about the Jesus that attracted people. You know, and he didn't just he didn't just attract the down and out. He definitely attracted the down and out. Don't get me wrong, but he also attracted. Uh, there's some lady that was like the wife of a Roman senator or something like that. I don't know. I don't know the details, but uh, he attracted people who were not down and out. So, uh, so there's the, the charismatic Jesus, right? There's the uh, persuasive Jesus. There's the uh, <laughs> miracle working Jesus. I mean. If you just start thinking about Jesus and all, all the versions of Jesus that you could devote your life to being, I mean, it's amazing. So, uh, there's the Jesus that, you know, spoke to 15,000 people, you know. There's the Jesus that uh, prayed, you know. You could just be somebody that prays. Um, so, uh, all right, but the, but the, I just, I, the, the what kind of Jesus I think about the one that's near and dear to my heart is the kind that said before Abraham was I am is the is the kind that said I was with my father in the beginning at the creation of the world right so you think about that and you think about the fact that he kicked over the table in a temple see it's crazy Jesus didn't when, when I say that he confronted authority Okay. He didn't confront the Romans. He confronted the religious leaders. You know, he really didn't care about the Romans. So there's some lesson in that. I, I really don't know what it is yet, but there's some lesson. In that. He confronted the religious leaders, right? It's almost as if God has no expectations of people that are not his. It's almost as if that, as if that is true. And, and that he has a world of expectations, the universe you might say, of expectations of people that are his, and that he's not afraid to take them to account and to hold them to account, and to do so, how shall we say, fervently, ardently, um, even violently, right? I mean, the Jesus that I think about is the Jesus who was with God when he used the Assyrians like a rod to beat his children with. And then when he was done beating his children, he threw the rod away, right? Because if Jesus was there confronting the religious leaders, calling them horrible names, uh, dead, rotten corpses, and broods of vipers, and, you know, God only knows. We know, we know, the, the words that we have translated his language into, but we don't know the actual heart and soul, you know, of his words. Because the same word in two different cultures can have two totally different uh, meanings. As a matter of fact, a guy at work was telling me about, was, I think it's Havon or something like that. Basically, it means, it, in Spanish, it means testicles. Now, for me, it's like huevos, but anyway. Uh, it might not be Havon, but it's something like that. And uh, so in one Spanish country, you say, ah, Havon, ah, Havon. It's like saying, you're an idiot. What's wrong with you, you dummy? You know, it, it doesn't really mean like literally testicles. <laughs> but in another, in another country, I'm trying to remember the countries, Ecuador and uh, Guatemala maybe. But anyway, uh, in another space, it does mean, so if you say Havon to somebody, it's like, that's like saying something that's, super insulting but if you say it in that other country it's not it is insulting but it's not like it's just they say it all constantly all the time like that's stupid what's about that's dumb you know so 
and yes, they know the literal interpretation, uh, but you know, it, it's just, it's one of those, it's culturally appropriated, you know, it, it doesn't, it's, it's sort of taken on the, the word. So, so that's an example. When, when, when we hear Jesus, that Jesus called the Pharisees a bunch of rotting corpses, you know, that, that, uh, have been scrubbed on the outside, but they're, you know, they're rotten on the inside. It actually, it actually is tomb, tombs, you know, whitewashed tombs, you know, perfect on the outside, rotten on the inside. Same thing though. I mean, we, we don't really know. I mean, it might be more insulting than we think it is because in our language, it's not, it's insulting, but it's not that insulting. Um, you know, a brood of vipers, you know, it might be insulting. me. I mean, the apostle Paul supposedly when he was dealing with some moth, dealing with uh, Jewish people who were obsessed, and let's not say Jewish because I, I don't want to be biased, like re, you know, like really strictly religious traditionalist fundamentalist, you might say, who were obsessed with circumcision. You know, the uh, Apostle Paul, who used to be Saul, who used to be the Pharisee of all Pharisees, must be the most religious person you could ever find around. You know, he said, "I wish you people would just go ahead and go all the way." Now, again, in English, we don't know what that means, but what he's saying is, I wish you people who are so obsessed with circumcision would just go ahead and castrate yourselves. <laughs> Presumably so you can't reproduce. <laughs> I mean, that is the word of God, right? And that Jesus is God. That's the Jesus that I think about. I think about the Jesus of Ezekiel chapter 23, where he's saying, he's, he's rebuking the women of Israel, and he's like, you women, you can look this up for yourself. You go chasing after these other men, these pagans, these non-Jewish people. Because they have genitals like donkeys and emissions like horses, right? I mean, and then uh, there, there's a, if you look it up, there's a Relevant magazine. There's a magazine called Relevant. And there's an article from Relevant magazine where it talks about all the curse words in the Bible that, they, that have been whitewashed out. Even I think uh, in the Bible there's a couple of F-bombs, if I'm not mistaken. But who cares about all this petty church lady crap, right? The point, the point, the bigger point is, is that uh, Jesus used the Assyrians as a stick to punish his children. There's that thing, you can never get them off. It's too fast and erratic. And uh, they're too erratic, basically. Um, and then threw the stick away. He, he's, he's the guy, okay, he's the Jesus that wiped out all life on earth because it was genetically compromised because they had learned to tinker with genetics just like we're learning. It's the same thing over and over and over again. Um, and he said, okay, that's it. I got, we got we to clean up this mess. We gotta, <laughs> it's, not, it's not about sin, but it is sin. Everybody thinks sin is like the... That's the problem with, with when churches get so obsessed with this whitewashed version of God. They reduce sin to this silly, petty, little girdle and bouffant conversation about right and wrong. And it's just like, that's the dumbest thing in it. But that's the whole point of religion is to make everything that is true, trivial and stupid and meaningless because then that just scares everybody away because people don't want to have anything to do with anything that's trivial trivial, and stupid and meaningless, you know? It's just like Sunday morning theater. Nobody wants to have, nobody except stupid people want to have anything to do with Sunday morning theater. I mean, who, what, what is that? You know, people say, I'd rather be out on my boat. And it's like, yeah, I don't blame you. I mean, you know, based upon what you're seeing and what you're seeing is you're seeing things accurately. It is a lot of meaningless, trivial, stupid, silly theater. You know, they have divorced themselves from the actual truth of actual scripture and replaced it with this Pee Wee Herman cardboard Disney World plastic nonsense. I agree with you, you know, but again, uh, which is what the Pharisees did too. They turned it into a big cultural ego, maniacal bunch of, Nonsense, right? Um, my old preacher, I gave the best definition of that uh, commandment, thou shalt not use the Lord's name in vain, that I've ever heard. And he said, what it really means is that thou, you, should, you shall not use the name of the Lord for the sake of vanity. In other words, th 
don't use God's name for the sake of your own damned pride. Like, you're something special because... No, it's like, that's ridiculous. I, I, it makes perfect sense for God to be pissed off by that. And I'm pretty sure my phone's going to cut off and I've been rambling forever anyway. Basically, Jesus is totally cool. He's the God of all history. And uh, he's not afraid to kick ass. And uh, if he was with God and Abraham, then he kicked a lot of ass between Abraham and uh, now. You know? Like, totally massive amounts of ass. And uh, Psalm chapter 50 says that God will tear us to pieces if we don't obey his commands. <laughs> so look it up for yourself. That's I don't believe in psychotic stuff. I don't believe in being crazy. I don't believe in violent, you know, like, like, no, uncontrolled. No, 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 no. I'm not, I'm not advocating that fundamentalist kind of nonsense. Uh, but I am advocating for the real Jesus and the real Word of God. And I am uh, and will continue to do my best to model the Jesus that kicked over the tables in the temple, that condemned the religious leaders for real things. You just don't go around condemning people for nonsense. That doesn't make any sense because then it just becomes about you. And it, that's, that, that's, no, no, that's not cool. It has to be real. It has to be sincere. And it has to be, you know, true. I mean, you know. I mean, and uh, a real person, a true person, will recognize that they're getting their ass kicked for a real and good reason and will overlook the ass kicking and focus on the real and good reason. Say, yeah, you're right. You might be getting a little carried away over there. I don't really like your approach, but you know what? You're right. And uh, uh, so thank you, you know. So uh, <clears throat> that's it. God bless everybody. Hope you like this rambling uh, stuff. Talk to you later.